Hello, would you like to find out how to use a toothbrush to create a spray painting effect? Well, watch this video to find out more. Hello, I'm David Denton, and today I'm going to be using a toothbrush, namely this toothbrush, and yeah, that's the one that I use to brush my teeth. It's probably about halfway through its life. It's still got quite a bit of life in that one. Um, and my teeth are looking smashing with it, so it's a good job. So, yeah, I'm going to be doing some painting today with this. And I'm going to be painting on this part of my painting. And I'll just show you what it is, because it looks a little bit abstract at the moment. There we go. Just found it. So, I've actually turned this upside down in your view so that you can see what it looks like in terms of what I've got on my board because I've actually turned mine upside down just so that it's a little bit higher up for me to use. So it's the sand that I'm going to be doing today with the toothbrush and it's going to be a well relatively quick, easy, cheap way of creating this sand texture. And hopefully it'll look pretty good in the end. So I've, I've done this base coat and it took me pretty much all this morning. Yeah, and I've actually got a, a time lapse of it somewhere on here. Here we go, let's have a look. Oh yes, yeah. So this is my time lapse of me doing the base coat and it took me quite a long time to do this as I said um, and I had to do a lot of blending between different colours especially as it went from sort of an orangey colour through to greens just because of the lighting in the painting. It didn't have to be absolutely perfect in terms of blending because I'm going to do a lot of toothbrush airbrushing over the top of this and there you go almost done that's pretty much the stage where i'm up to now so here i've got my painting up above we've got the palette with my different colors on it the only color that i haven't got out of my split sp split split primary palette is the the cool red i've got the warm red but i haven't got the cool red so they're all the colours that I'll be needing today. So let's make a start. I'll just, in fact, before we do that, let's just check. Oh, hello, Chrissy. All right, just seen that you're on there. So yeah, we're going to be doing all of this with a toothbrush. Get myself set up and this all out of the way. Okay, so my first job is I'm going to Mix up a colour somewhere for, let's go for around here, shall we? So I'm just using a manky old brush for this. There we go. Add a bit of my warm red in there. A touch of this cool blue. Might have done a bit too much there, but now that looks all right. Now I'm going to add a bit of water as well into that. And then I will put that onto my toothbrush. Along with a touch more water. And then we're going to have a go at spraying it on. Now I have masked out areas all around here. So the only bits it'll go on are here, okay? Let's see. There we go. We're getting a bit of spraying on there. Let's add a bit more water in. And yeah, Chrissy, I am I am enjoying live stream actually. Something a bit different. I also like doing my normal videos as well. But this is just something that you can get ready and you can see my process a little bit easier really. You see things as they actually happen. Whereas normally I've edited things out and well edited out loads and loads of mistakes. 
And here you get to see everything warts and all, I'm afraid. And get to hear all my, my mistakes, which there'll be no, no doubt many of them. I liked your buffalo painting the other day, Chrissy. I thought that was good. Right, just build this up a bit. It's a case with this of getting just the right amount of water in with it. So that it'll flick off nicely. I'm putting a bit on the green, but not masses. I'm putting more of it around this sort of sandy coloured area. The best bit about this is when we take all the paper off at the end. Yeah, it's always a pleasure watching yours. Chrissy, I, I generally watch watch them while I'm either doing a bit of painting or having my dinner. Just add a bit of white to that. The good thing with yours is that you actually get a painting finished in not too long, whereas mine take 14 years to get done. So I've just added a touch of white to this. Start spraying some of that in there. The reason why I thought of this was that many, many years ago, when I was heavily into Aliens, the film, it was actually my favourite film at the time. I did a painting of one of the aliens and I did it pretty much entirely with a, a toothbrush because the, the still that I'd got from the film was very grainy and I thought that'd kind of give the right look to it. And I did a few bits with a normal brush but the majority of it was with a toothbrush like this and it looked really good. So I thought right I'll try that again here. Don't want too much around this green. I think we're going to go in more with some green later. But when Aliens first came out, it, it was a it was an 18. I don't know whether it's gone down to a 15 rating now. I'm not sure. But it was an 18. And I know that at the time I was only 15. And I was giddy to see it. Absolutely giddy and my mum rang up the local video rental store and said, yeah, it's okay for him to have it. <laughs> and I went round and collected it. And the fellow in the video shop was a lovely fella and he handed it over and I took it home and watched it and really enjoyed it. Since then, it's gone down quite a bit. I think it's aged pretty badly. I think the original Alien's a lot better now. That still looks absolutely gorgeous. Right, let's add a bit of this orange in there. Which was the scariest thing, Chrissy? Alien or aliens? I think for me, probably alien. I think it's a lot scarier film. Aliens is more an action film, really. Good though, there's some good jumpy bits in it. I think Alien just looks so gorgeous. I got it on DVD and now I've got it on Blu-ray and every time I get it, it just looks looks equally as good. Whereas as you go up through the different formats with Aliens, it looks progressively worse, sadly. Right, I'm going to add in a little bit of this darker colour now. So 
some of that slapped on there. And I'm going to go into these shadows with it. Actually, I think I might make that a little bit thicker now. Just to make it a little less splattery. There we go. I'm going to give this a bit of a wash my toothbrush, I think. Just get all that off there. Okay, let's go in with a bit of this. Try that. Yeah, that's better. So I'm not trying to get this all over. This is going more in these dark shadows. So I'm just making, making little flicking movements here. I can have some of this in the green over here. The only thing with this flicking is be careful, especially if you're working on an easel where you're standing up, be careful whatever's behind it. I've actually covered up the wall that's behind this just to make sure that I don't flick stuff everywhere. Because it does go everywhere. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of red in with that now. Put in a bit of this. I've just masked off so that I've got just one area of the sand to do. And then as time goes on, I'll remove this and then I'll mask off another area and do the same thing with that. Right, let's go on here. I've actually got my reference blown up nice and big for this. And I'm, I keep looking at that all the time just to see where I need each colour. Yeah, to paint all this with that little paintbrush that I normally use and do this in dots would take me a while, to say the least. What have you got planned for your next painting then, Chrissy? Um, bit more in this darker area here. This is a finer spray, you can probably see it up here. I'm just putting in. Okay. And yeah, by the time I finish some of my paintings, I am drawing my pension. They do take forever. But I suppose. That's what you get for painting with a five zero brush. Just going to put in a little bit of lighter just round this rim here. Yep. Just get rid of this off my toothbrush again. Oh, definitely do a mousse, Chrissy. Definitely. They're great. I don't know whether I've mentioned this before in a video. Possibly. One of the things I ramble on about. But I used to have a mousse called Trevor. And he was a little toy mousse. And he was great. 
that, that's about the whole story really that I had a moose called Trevor um, he did knock about a bit and hang around the little toy plastic one the only problem was I was about um, probably about 17 or 18 at the time and he actually had a friend who was an ostrich called Ferdinand Ferdinand the ostrich and they used to be friends together can't be a good mouse their quality I even painted one for my GCSE I painted it outside this really evil looking wood for some reason I think everything I painted for my GCSE had some level of evilness in it just because it really annoyed my art teachers One of the paintings I did was like from a almost like from a slasher film. They weren't happy with that at all. Somebody had got like one of these huge like evil Rambo knives that they I'm doubting they've got now, since though they're gonna be like nearly fifty. But they had it when they were a child and I borrowed that as a reference because at that time there was obviously no internet so you couldn't see what these things look like so I borrowed that and put that as the knife into my GCSE level painting yeah my teachers weren't happy but then again they were probably too busy doing their own watercolors to notice what I was doing Oh yeah, Chrissy, do a picture of Trevor. Definitely call him Trevor in it. Yeah, that'd be great. Trevor the Moose. I've got a big suspicion that all moose meese mooses? What's the plural of moose? Meeses, probably. Meese. Moose meeses. All of them are called Trevor, I'm guessing. Because it's just such a good name. But ostriches, they're, they're a bit more leery with their names. They'll go for out. They're not as picky. I met one the other day called Reggie. You were all right. Tried to sell me some dodgy knockoff DVDs, but I wasn't having it. Right, this is looking good. It's building up nicely. Oh, did you have the same at school then, Chrissy? Nobody, art teachers, just didn't really bother... They just kind of did their own thing. This was in the sort of 80s. But interestingly enough, I was talking to somebody who, who went to the same school as me and I mentioned some teachers and they were exactly the same. Nothing had changed. He was a bit younger than me, but nothing had changed at all. One of the teachers we had used to sit in a room and smoke his pipe. And at the end of two years, the course that I was doing, I had a file with nothing in it. Absolutely nothing. Which is a bit shocking, really, that this guy was being paid to do that. Go off in his room and smoke his pipe. But my brother had the same teacher, and he did exactly the same thing as me. We both did the same scheme. Of, there was a book that he used to tell you to read through which obviously nobody ever did everybody just laughed about and he'd teach other with rulers uh, but at the end of the year when it came to re be revising I just got that book and just went through it and taught myself physics and actually passed in the end so I suppose that's one thing that school taught us you have to crack on and teach yourself as Chrissy would say Yeah, and Chrissy had the same experience, yeah. What a surprise. Right. I like how this you can just build it up nice and steady and you can get some 
little flecks of colour elsewhere in other areas. And it's all quite subtle. That's looking good. I'm, I like that. The only time, actually, I tell a lie, this guy did actually teach one lesson. And it was the lesson where he got a... He, he basically hooked everyone up to the mains. So he, he got us all in a big chain, all holding hands, and then threw a switch, and everybody got a big electric shock. And then he went in his room for a smoke of his pipe. And that was it. That was the level of teaching. I can't even remember what it was supposed to be. Oh, no, I can. It's the um, volts that jolts, but the mills that kills. And he slapped a load of volts through us, allegedly. I suspect there was quite a few mills as well, but yeah. So all good fun. Right, I'm going to get into that green, I think, now. Let's start mixing some nice greens. You're joking. You got told you'd never be an artist because you're left-handed. Well, that prediction came out right then, didn't it? Dear me. They couldn't be further from the truth, could they, with that? Good grief. That's encouragement for you. What's, what's the difference, really? How can you not be an art? What? I always think if you can... If you've got the fine motor skills with your hand to be able to write your name then you've got all the skills that you need to be able to paint well apart from learning how to look and things like that and all the other stuff that you have to learn but you've got the physical skills to be able to do it so no idea why they tell you that clowns that's what some of them were Put a bit of that green in there as well, just a touch. You can see now how that undercoat that I did before, it doesn't have to be that great because you put so many layers of this on that it just covers it over, which is good. Right, let's add in some more of this blue. Let's go a bit bluer. This makes a nice change for me, getting away from that tiny little brush. Nice to do a different style of painting. Get in there with that. You can see on here it all flicking on, but these later on I'll just paint over. <laughs> a lefty's brain doesn't work the same as a right-handed brain. Is there any truth in that at all? Is are there differences? That's something to look up. Is there actually any scientific evidence for this? At all. I bet I bet now you could probably Google left-handed artists. And I bet there are some. It wouldn't surprise me if it's about the same sort of number as the general population. There must have been left-handed artists. There we go. Let's have a little bit of lighter green in there. Yeah, I think a bit of research needs doing into that. Into the left-handedness. I'm sure it's a load of rubbish. Let's have a bit of the blue now, just with white. This is the nice thing with this, you can put in colours that are not obviously there at the start. But because you're only putting in a little bit of it, 
it adds that little bit of interest and movement in the colour. I seem to whack a bit of that over there. Sometimes you don't think anything's happening, but when you come off, you can see you're still spraying. Oh. The only thing with this is you do get a bit of a sore finger after a while. So you're limited by how, how long you can do it for, probably. See, left-handed! Left-handed, there you go. It is possible. There were certainly some cruel teachers. Definitely. The one thing I was absolutely terrified at school about was this thing in PE called the falling leaf. And supposedly in the second year at the secondary school, you had to do this thing called the falling leaf. And what it involved was you sat on this beam and then you shuffled your bottom forward a little bit and then you leant backwards and you did a backwards flip off it but obviously when people told you this story it always got exaggerated so this beam rather than being about sort of five foot off the floor it was always like about 30 foot off the floor this beam so i was just imagining like flipping backwards off this thing and then just falling to my death and onto my head about a 30 foot drop and you could see these beams in the PE hall actually went up that high so it was possible so I was just absolutely terrified all the time when this was going to happen this falling leaf and in the end it was about five foot off the ground and even that's the, you're not comfortable doing it, it has to be said it's not a natural thing to throw yourself backwards off something high. But yeah, it was definitely better than 30 foot off the ground. I'm sure that's probably why I'm so terrified of heights. Must have something to do with it. Thinking about that for so many years of your life. Absolutely terrifying. But then after that, obviously, you tell all the children younger than you that, yeah, it is 30 foot up in the air and it's terrifying. And that one lad died by snapping his neck. Things like that, obviously, don't you? Just to keep the, keep the fun going. Oh, it's looking nice, that. Looking good. I think we're having a little bit of sparkle. Sorry, I've just turned my head then. I'm getting a bit giddy. I think I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle to this sand, just with some white just to get that little bit of glinting off it oh yeah that was good a bit less in this shady area here if i know i'm i'm terrified of heights but I have to keep pushing myself. I did the London Eye a while back and the first time I did it, I was just sat with my head in my hands, <laughs> just looking down, just absolutely terrified. And then supposedly, I don't know how true this is, but it definitely worked for me. Supposedly, you can't keep that level of fear up for more than 15 minutes. And the Millennium Wheel, the London Eye, takes up about half an hour. And when I hit the top, I suddenly calmed down and I could look around. And so it, it actually worked there for me. And then the next time I went on it, I was able to actually stand up. And then the third time I went on it, I was actually able to walk around. It's still absolutely terrifying, but yeah, not, not quite as terrifying. It's impressive though, it is really, really tall. But I like I like my theme parks as well, so I like going on all the rides there and the roller coasters especially. But I'm always terrified that the lift on the lift till it breaks down and you've got to walk back down it. Ugh. 
I can sit on it and get thrown around on it. That's all right. But the thought of having to walk back down, oh, dear me. That would not be good. I don't know if they'd get me down. Oh, she was scared of heights as well then, Chrissy. Yeah. It's not really a fear of heights, is it? It's more a fear of falling and dying. Which I think is pretty rational, really. I can remember once we walked up one of the three peaks and this was before... Oh, I dropped that. It was before I'd kind of developed my tolerance to heights. And we walked up Penny Ghent, this hill. And it's quite steep at the start. And I made it up one bit that was a bit treacherous. And my wife, she thought, it's, it's dodgy. Like, I don't think we can actually go down here. It looks really dangerous to go back down. And I was saying, but I can't go up. <laughs> so we were like stuck for ages. And in the end, like I sat down and got myself together and started walking. But there was this older woman in front of me and she kept saying go on you're young and fit you go past me and I'm going no you're all right because all I was doing was walking directly behind her and looking at the back of her feet and there was no way I was walking past her at all and by the end when we got to the top she was absolutely shattered because we'd been walking behind her all the time and pushing her on <laughs> poor lady But I've, I've been since and actually got up there, so that's not bad. It does get easier. The more you do. Right, let me just get a bit more white paint. Won't be a second. There we go. I'm just going to have a sip of my non-flavoured, non-fizzy pop. In other words, water. Good gag. Right. Let's just get... I need a lighter green in here. So let's mix a nice light green. So a lime green. So I'm going to need a bit more of the blue. Touch more, I think. Okay. Let's see. Let's try that. Put a bit of that in there. Yeah, it is coming out. Yeah, I liked your airbrushing the other day. That's cheap as well for an airbrush, 30 quid. Remember I got one years ago that eventually broke, but when I got it, it was like about 100 quid, I think. I think it was about 100 quid for the actual airbrush and about 50 quid for the compressor, I seem to remember. I know it was expensive. So that's really good. I think it does need a touch more of the yellowing, actually. Yeah, I'd love to see you do something in the fog with that, Chrissy. I do like my foggy pictures and foggy films and put fog in something and I'll instantly like it. Yeah, how's that looking? Looking good. Okay. Just going to put in some of this darker green again. Just round. This is actually the robot's leg here, and just round the bottom of it, there is a little shadow. So I'm going to do a precise bit of flickering here. So 
So I'll just torture this in as well. I may have to go in after when this is dried and add a few washers in with it as well. Let me just wipe that off because I think that's got some of the old paint on. And no, I, I'm not on Facebook. I, I I was for a while and then I'd had enough of it. Yeah. It was driving me round the twist a bit. So I got rid of that. And I, I can't use Instagram either because I've got a retro phone. Let's get out my retro phone, which is good because you can drop it and do all sorts with it and it still survives. There we go. There's my retro phone. And it's good because it can't connect to the internet. It doesn't even have color. So then when I'm out, I'm out. And I've normally got it switched off when I'm out so that nobody can contact me I like to be out and uncontactable and just enjoy being out I think that probably comes from being a child of the 70s and 80s I think that desire to just get away from the internet at times Yeah, I've heard you talking about that Facebook group, Chrissy. Is it going all right? It's probably quite a good use for it, that. At least it's positive, isn't it? Compared to some of the uses you see for Facebook. I really don't need to see pictures of whatever people have had for their tea. I'm not interested. Unless it was a huge pot of marmite, then I might be interested. That would be good. Right. How's that looking? I think I still need to darken this area down a touch. I think those phones, I think they've actually started selling them again now. These they've actually come slightly back into fashion <laughs> oh dear because I think they were selling them as like a second phone because your first one your smartphones oh the battery's always running out and they're not particularly reliable that they sold you this other phone so you'd always have like something where you could make emergency calls on it and things which amuses me immensely It annoys me that I even have to charge it up once a week. That really irritates me. Can't say I'm happy with that. I'm having to charge it up every day, dear me. Yeah, this is looking nice. Yeah, so if you are interested in this, um, sorry, if you are interested in Chrissy's Facebook group, I'm sure if you pop along to one of her videos, it'll be in the description, won't it, Chrissy, I'd have thought? For people to come and join. But you've got to be a nice person. You can't be horrible. You've got to be nice and pleasant to people. And supportive. That's the sort of thing we like. Okay, how's that looking? Right, I'm just having a look at my reference now and seeing what else I need to do. <coughs> I think I just need a little touch of orange in some places again. Let me wash this off. Some orange in 
change again. I think this will be the last bit by the looks of things. Just in there. It's a touch too wet. You kind of get the idea as you go along of of how much water you need to add to it to get different effects but if it's the first time you've ever done it just practice on a bit of paper first before you do it onto proper painting but yeah it is possible to do pretty much an entire painting with this with just a few bits of brushwork and that's fun I think. Okay, should we take all this paper off and have a little look? Right. Oh, have I just knocked that? Let's see because the, the feed's a little bit behind it. I will correct it if it moves. Let's start taking these off. This all looks a bit of a budget and scarper job, all this masking, but ah, yeah, here we go. Yeah, let's get that. There we go. I had knocked it. Like I said, you get all the mistakes that I'd normally put into my outtakes. Now I'd actually put on a little bit of masking fluid. So we're just going to take that off gently. There we go. Now these, some of these bits here, I will go in another time and mask off this area and then do the same thing on those. Right, let's get rid of that bit. Okay, guys, sticky to everything. Done. Okay, this bit. When I was actually doing the masking fluid against the paper, I pressed the paper down and then did the masking fluid over the top of the paper as well. Just then it gets a nice seal on it and you don't get any stray flecks going under the paper. Now I did the same and masked off those shadow areas as well, but at another time I will go back in and spray over those as well but I'll mask around them first oh that's a nice edge look at that lovely take that off just get rid of this bit here Oh, no, apologies for earlier in the week because I didn't actually get my mindful painting video out this week but it wouldn't have been very mindful actually because I've got somebody in doing the doing the bathroom at the minute so it had been well not very relaxed and not very mindful because all you'd heard is somebody smacking away at the walls Checking out, knock the camera again. I know what I'm like. Let's 
take that bit off. It's like opening a Christmas present, but a little bit more tedious and it takes longer and you've got to be more careful. Right, let's remove all of this. So I'll move the camera and show you a bit of the painting so far. In fact, before we do that, let's get rid of the palette. That's better. got all this gunk painted in this week as well but I've got that for another video the making of that but yeah that's looking nice so far and then what I'll be doing is masking off this area and doing the same thing to here doing the same thing to here get this light rim light here and into the dark areas too and then into the shadows and then at the end I'll paint the rocks over the top and it will end up looking something like this when it gets flipped over oh no actually that's the unflipped but yeah it'll look something like that and get the water painted in as well should look very nice okay so if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see more of these videos, you'd like to see how this painting carries on, then you can think about subscribing. And if you click the notification bell, you'll be notified of all of my future videos. Oh, hello, Davey. Oh, you've, you've just come for the ending. Yeah, you just come for the ending. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I'll leave it there today because th it's going to take me ages to mask all these areas off and carry on and show you more. And it's not exactly in the easiest places for me to, to move things with 5,000 cameras and microphones around me. But thank you very much. Chrissy for joining me. Thank you very much, Davy, for joining me. And I hope you've enjoyed that. And I'll be back next week with I don't think I'll be doing another mindful video next week because the bathroom fit is still going to be a smacking things about. But I will get another video done later in the week. And it will probably be either about this bit of gunk or a little bit more about how I've done this sand world. So that'll be next week. Okay, so hope you all have a great weekend. Sorry about the few technical issues during this, like me smacking the camera about, but there we go. It's, it's a live video. We've had a nice little chat about school days and things, which is always nice. Right, okay then, so enjoy your weekend, and I will see you in the next one.